What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to etch some glass on 3D printers. Could be any 3D printer. Probably be a little tough on deltas, but you could probably give her a rip. So, if that's something you're into, stick around. So we're back. And I would just like to say that I recorded that intro with the webcam because I'm incredibly lazy today. That's what I felt like doing. So basically, this process is a whole lot easier than a lot of people are thinking. But something, something's, something's wrong here. Need ah, uh, ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, now you can't see my face at all because of the glare. Something else is wrong. That's right. Much better. We're already printing on a glass bed with a 3D printer, right? We're printing PLA on it for the most part. You can print other things. Um, but we're already printing on a glass bed, and we want to etch some glass. We're already halfway there, folks. We just haven't done it yet. So what we want to do is make the the part that we're going to print slightly smaller than the larger uh, picture frame glass, and that's going to stop it from running into binder clips. So the only other thing we have to do here is address how we're going to etch. So anything that we leave open space with the negative portion, whatever's not printed, is going to be etched. Let's do 0.3 millimeters thick. Then we have three layers of 0.1 millimeter PLA. I like to just make it black so I can actually see what's going on. Then we're just going to import SVGs. Now making an, an, an SVG is very, very, very easy. What we're doing is we're just converting pixel pixel images into fine lines that the computer can interpret as a line. And that allows our CAD software to understand that that's in three-dimensional space instead of just random pixels anywhere they want to be. Okay, so I'm in open clip art. Let's pick something like fishing. We'll pick fishing. Like this one, fishing. This looks cool. That guy looks pretty cool. Looks like a pretty cool dude. His rod's a little broken. I don't really know what's going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the big image in PNG. So I have that. So then we're going to find a PNG to SVG converter online. They're mostly free. And this one actually works with any picture, even if it's like a landscape photo or whatever. So it's pretty cool. It's uh, picksvg.com. Pretty easy to remember. I'm going to upload that picture we just got. It's going to do a little bit of magic work. And then you can just download that SVG where we're going to state the dimensions. Sometimes they'll load in too large so you have to make them smaller. Alright, so now we have an SVG in Tinkercad. That looks good. But that's not quite all we want. I mean, it looks good. I can see that looking real good. That, I mean, it's not quite there. You know, it doesn't have the pizzazz. We could add some text. We can go into Tinkercad here and just add some plain text. Look at that. What is that? Times New Roman? Get out of here. This is just add a picture. So if we can add a picture, we can add fonts. So let's find a font we like. I, I suck at this. It takes me like hours to find just settle on a font, you know? It's not that hard. <gasps> let's do this one. Okay, so this one is mail? Mom? Anyway, once you extract uh, the zip file, you'll get a TTF file. So this is a font, this is a font, this is a font. You'll get a TTF file in the packet. And what you want to do is just, whoop, what you want to do is right click it and just hit install. And that'll install it on Windows. This is a Windows 10 PC, but it works the same with Windows 8. So what I've done here is just opened up GIMP, everybody's free picture editor. Just make it as large as I want. That should be good. And then I'm going to add another layer. Just a new layer, doesn't really matter. I'm going to put fishing in there. I'm going to go to 190. And I'm going to fit it on here, hopefully. So then we'll do file, export as PNG. So if you leave it on this invert one, it'll hollow out that black part in there and it'll just leave an outline. We don't want that. Well, I don't, I mean, you might, but I don't want that. So I'm going to go to this invert four and it gives me 
full black. So now we can import those into Tinkercad just like we imported anything else. So now we have two SVGs of the fonts that we wanted. And now we just, it's just, what do you want it to do? You know, I want to do this. I think that looks pretty cool. I think that looks all right. Something like that right there. All those SVGs are going to load at zero on the work plane. So they're already on the bottom. Four objects. We got the guy fishing SVG. We got gone fishing, which are two SVGs. I'm going to turn those into holes. Then I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to group. And then after the computer looks for a while. Now we have holes in this thin sheet which will be a thin sheet of plastic with holes in it. Definitely a weird kind of deal there. Put something like that in there. And something like around there. Granted, it's probably not going to take a lot of time to print, but why waste any time, right? So now we have a much, well not much smaller, but smaller STL. And then we can export that and then throw it in to Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D here, 15 on either side. So I'm just going to, I'm going to click over one, two. So now we're ready to print it, technically. We should be centered in our glass frame and we should be ready to rock. Currently, a child safety lock is beating me. And I don't know what it is. I'm pushing down to open. I'm pushing down to open, you piece of What the F, yo? I think I over tightened it. Solve that with a big stick. I don't have any kids. All right, so now that that's painted on, I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna let it off gas in a ventilated area. The shop here is pretty well ventilated, but not as much as I would like. So I'm gonna let it sit for about, I don't know, I'd say about 10 minutes.
thanks for staying to the end of the video. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this thing. If you uh, did enjoy this, please consider subscribing because I make a lot of goofy stuff that you might uh, be interested in watching later. But we've had we've had quite a few new uh, subscribers lately, and I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. I notice you, and I hope that uh, I don't fail you as much as people are probably going to assume I will. Yeah, we had like a little mini explosion there. So like I had like 15% subscriber growth in like three days. So there's that. If you're not subscribed, please consider it so you don't miss any of this. Uh, you can ring the bell if you want, but I don't really do the bell thing either. So don't uh, feel obligated. I got to do a little bit more modifications before I release the STLs just because um, I get all the pane glass from the dollar store. You go to the dollar store, um, here in the States, you can go to the dollar store and pick up an eight by 10 frame. It has occurred to me that the eight by 10 designation of the frames from the dollar store, not necessarily eight by 10. So got to work on that STL a little, a little bit to make sure it kind of comes together and I've made it so it pieces together, but I don't quite like how it pieces together. I also want to uh, add some kickstands to it so you could stand it up on a desk instead of having to hang it. Yeah, so if you do decide to kind of use this technique and make something, please hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Thingiverse, any of those. The name on all those is 16 by 80. Uh, hit me up on those or email me 16 by 80 at gmail.com and I'll throw them maybe on like a recap video or something when uh, I see some pictures from people. Until next time, keep your amps up and your filament dry and I will catch you on the next one.